François Vita, Seigneur de la Bigotière, was a French mathematician whose work on new algebra was an important step towards modern algebra, due to its innovative use of letters as parameters in equations. He was a lawyer by trade, and served as a privy councillor to both Henry III and Henry IV. Biography Origins Vita was born at Fontenay-le-Comte, Vendée. His grandfather was a merchant from La Rochelle. His father, Etienne Vita, was an attorney in Fontenay-le-Comte and a notary in La Busso. His mother was the aunt of Barnabé Brisson, a magistrate and the first president of parliament during the ascendancy of the Catholic League of France. Vita went to a Franciscan school and in 1558 studied law at Poitiers, graduating as a Bachelor of Law in 1559. A year later, he began his career as an attorney in his native town. From the outset, he was entrusted with some major cases, including the settlement of rent in Poitou for the widow of King Francis I of France and looking after the interests of Mary, Queen of Scots. Serving Parthenay in 1564, Vita entered the service of Antoinette de Robetair, Lady Soubise, wife of Jean V de Parthenay Soubise, one of the main Huguenot military leaders and accompanied him to Lyon to collect documents about his heroic defence of that city against the troops of Jacques of Savoy, second Duke of Nemours just the year before, the same year, at Parc Soubies, in the commune of Mouchamps, Vendy, Vita became the tutor of Catherine de Parthenay, Soubis's twelve-year-old daughter. He taught her science and mathematics and wrote for her numerous treatises on astronomy, geography and trigonometry, some of which have survived. In these treatises, Vita used decimal numbers and he also noted the elliptic orbit of the planets, 40 years before Kepler and 20 years before Giordano Bruno's death. John V de Parthenay presented him to King Charles IX of France. Vita wrote a genealogy of the Parthenay family and following the death of John V de Parthenay Soubise in 1566, his biography. In 1568 Antoinette, Lady Soubise, married her daughter Catherine to Baron Charles de Quilnec and Vita went with Lady Soubise to La Rochelle, where he mixed with the highest Calvinist aristocracy, leaders like Coligny and Condé and Queen Jean d'Albret of Navarre and her son, Henry of Navarre, the future Henry IV of France. In 1570, he refused to represent the Soubise ladies in their infamous lawsuit against the Baron de Quilnec, where they claimed the Baron was unable to provide an heir. First steps in Paris in 1571, he enrolled as an attorney in Paris, and continued to visit his student Catherine. He regularly lived in Fontenay-le-Comte, where he took on some municipal functions. He began publishing his Universalium Inspection of Mad Canonem Mathematicum Liber Singularis and wrote new mathematical research by night or during periods of leisure. He was known to dwell on any one question for up to three days, his elbow on the desk, feeding himself without changing position. In 1572, Vita was in Paris during the Saint. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. That night, Baron de Quilnec was killed after having tried to save Admiral Coligny the previous night. The same year, Vita met Françoise de Rohan, Lady of Garnache, and became her advisor against Jacques, Duke of Nemours. In 1573, he became a councillor of the Parliament of Brittany, at Rennes, and two years later, he obtained the agreement of Antoinette de Robetair for the marriage of Catherine of Parthenay to Duke René de Rohan, Françoise's brother. In 1576, Henry, Duc de Rohan took him under his special protection, recommending him in 1580 as maitre des requitus. In 1579, Vita printed his Canon M. Mathematicum. A year later, he was appointed maitre des requitus to the Parliament of Paris, committed to serving the king. That same year, his success in the trial between the Duke of Nemours and Françoise de Rohan, to the benefit of the latter, earned him a resentment of the tenacious Catholic League. Exile in Fontenay between 1583 and 1585, the League persuaded Henry III to release Vita. 
Vieter having been accused of sympathy with the Protestant cause. Henry of Navarre, at Rowan's instigation, addressed two letters to King Henry III of France on March 3 and April 26, 1585. In an attempt to obtain Vieta's restoration to his former office, he failed. Vieta retired to Fontenay and Beauvoir-sur-Mer, with François de Rowan. He spent four years devoted to mathematics, writing his analytical art, or new algebra, code breaker to two kings in 1589, Henry III took refuge in Blois. He commanded the royal officials to be at Tours before 15 April 1589. Vieta was one of the first who came back to Tours. He deciphered the secret letters of the Catholic League and other enemies of the king. Later, he had arguments with the classical scholar Joseph Just Scaliger. Vieta triumphed against him in 1590. After the death of Henry III, Vieta became a privy councillor to Henry of Navarre, now Henry IV. He was appreciated by the king, who admired his mathematical talents. Vieta was given the position of councillor of the Parliament at Tours. In 1590, Vieta discovered the key to a Spanish cipher, consisting of more than 500 characters, and this meant that all dispatches in that language which fell into the hands of the French could be easily read. Henry IV published a letter from Commander Moro to the King of Spain. The contents of this letter, read by Vita, revealed that the head of the League in France, the Duke of Mayenne, planned to become king in place of Henry IV. This publication led to the settlement of the Wars of Religion. The King of Spain accused Vieta of having used magical powers. In 1593, Vieta published his arguments against Scaliger. Beginning in 1594, he was appointed exclusively deciphering the enemy's secret codes. Gregorian calendar in 1582. Pope Gregory XIII published his bull into Gravis Amas and ordered the Catholic kings to comply with the change from the Julian calendar, based on the calculations of the Calabrian Dr. Aloysius Lilius or Gilio. His work was resumed, after his death, by the scientific advisor to the Pope, Christopher Clavius. Vieta accused Clavius, in a series of pamphlets, of introducing corrections and intermediate days in an arbitrary manner and misunderstanding the meaning of the works of his predecessor, particularly in the calculation of the lunar cycle. Vita gave a new timetable, which Clavius cleverly refuted, after Vita's death, in his explication. It is said that Vita was wrong. Without doubt, he believed himself to be a kind of king of times, as the historian of mathematics, D'Ombres, claimed. It is true that Vieta held Clavius in low esteem, as evidenced by de Thou. He said that Clavius was very clever to explain the principles of mathematics, that he heard with great clarity what the authors had invented, and wrote various treatises compiling what had been written before him without quoting its references. So, his works were in a better order which was scattered and confused in early writings. The Adrian van Rumen affair in 1546, Scaliger resumed his attacks from the University of Leiden. Vita replied definitively the following year. In March that same year, Adrian van Rumen sought the resolution, by any of Europe's top mathematicians, to a polynomial equation of degree 45. King Henry IV received a snub from the Dutch ambassador, who claimed that there was no mathematician in France. He said it was simply because some Dutch mathematician, Adrian van Rumen, had not asked any Frenchman to solve his problem. Vita came, saw the problem, and, after leaning on a window for a few minutes, solved it. It was the equation between sin and sin. He resolved this at once, and said he was able to give at the same time the solution to the other 22 problems to the ambassador. At legit, at solve it, he later said. Further, he sent a new problem back to Van Rummen. 
for resolution by Euclidean tools of the lost answer to the problem first set by Apollonius of Perga. Van Rumen could not overcome that problem without resorting to a trick. Final years in 1598, Vita was granted special leave. Henry IV, however, charged him to end the revolt of the notaries, whom the king had ordered to pay back their fees. Sick and exhausted by work, he left the king's service in December 1602 and received 20,000 acute CU, which were found at his bedside after his death. A few weeks before his death, he wrote a final thesis on issues of cryptography, whose memory made obsolete all encryption methods of the time. He died on 23 February 1603, as De Thou wrote, leaving two daughters, Jean, born from Barb Cotteru, and Suzanne, born from Julien Leclerc. Jean, the eldest, died in 1628, having married Jean Gabriel, a councillor of the Parliament of Brittany. Suzanne died in January 1618 in Paris. The cause of Vita's death is unknown.